Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday this week with Dov Tsal. Hi, Dov. Welcome back. Uh, Thanks for having me. And it's literally welcome back because Dov just had a water break and now he's back. Uh, So, Dov, on Thursdays, we talk about what success means for us as Scrum Masters. But before we dive into that, we want to hear what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. My my really favorite retrospective format is just entering into the room and seeing what happens. So um, really, as a facilitator, it's a it it's sort of jazz. You no, know, you enter and then you let just things emerge. Um, but the uh, a formal, a more concrete a retrospective uh, that I ran a few times and it is truly magic is a silent retrospective. So whatever format, whatever questions you want to ask, whatever you want to do, you write it down. And you write it clearly on the board. You put some soft music and you put on the door or on the the, the, the invite on the Zoom, whatever, a, a, a sign that says, Shh, no talking now. And when they enter, they receive the instructions and the explanations in writing. So imagine in Zoom, because everyone now is in Zoom, you have soft music in your ears and you see me and I'm holding a piece of paper saying, this is a silent retrospective. And then I say, "Eh, let's start by eh, thanking someone. Do you have anyone you want to thank to write a note and show it on the screen? And you don't actually say it, you just show it. Yeah, you you, you just write it, right? Okay. Eh, And then you you might say... um, you think of the whatever what happened this sprint and write it in this corner of the board right so put and you just guide them through this and from time to time you have to be expressive in your in your facial expression right to 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 assure the team that it's okay and the soft music from my experience it fills this gap of people who, if it's total silent, will feel awkward. But if you dare do it even more, do it with really silence. But I think this is, even for me, it's adventurous. So, What what might be one insight that you got from running a silent retrospective, like something that surprised you in the way the team reacted? The space that I held now after your question, probably help the people who listen understand better what you're asking. When we fill our ears and mind with words and words and words and words that are pushed on us, that we don't read, we don't respect this need to step back and reflect and and just listen to what emerges in us. And this is the main insight. Today I met a friend who who, uh, runs a a meetup called Agile Playground and the next time they're going to try a a silent meetup. So everyone meets and just have silence because he experienced one with me and it's, it really sets a different tone. For me, a retrospective is mainly, the, the main purpose of a retrospective is dream time for the team. You know, we are awake all the time. We're working, we're talking, we're seeing TV, whatever. And now the brain shuts itself from all of outside things and just let neurons connect. It's not a ceremony that is dedicated to decide what are the three things that we want to do next sprint. It's just a way to breathe. And I think there's nothing more powerful to breathe than silence. Absolutely. And uh, uh, reflecting on that, we move on to the next question, which of course is what success means for you. But you wanted to first explore what is the role of the Scrum Master? So Dov, what is the role of the Scrum Master for you? Uh, Thank you for this question. (laughs) Um, 
when I start with teams, this is the first thing I, I, I say. I say, my role as a Scrum Master is to be the parent of the team. And there are two interesting keywords there, one parent and one team. So first of all, a parent, if anyone has kids, uh, they know that a parent of a baby and a parent of a 20-year-old are totally different things and that every parent has their own parenting style. But uh, if you have, a, 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 I don't know, a two-year-old, then you will keep, keep them from touching the stove. While if you have a 30-year-old, your support is totally different and, and your, the need of you in their life is different. And if you have a 50-year-old, probably they support you, so you're not needed there, right? So one, the role of the Scrum Master totally changes as function of the maturity of the team. And the second keyword is team. I'm not the parent of any individual in the team. You're all grown up and perhaps grown up more than me. I'm the parent of this invisible entity, which is the togetherness of all of you as one entity. So that, that's how I describe the role. What do you think? Uh, I think that it's very interesting to ask you the next question, which is, in the scope of that answer, yeah. what does success mean for a Scrum Master then? Ah, uh, yeah. So, so it's obvious, right? If you if you have a kid which is independent and your help is not needed anymore, that's the ultimate success. And how does that look like when the entity is not a kid, but rather the collective uh, that doesn't get enough visibility called the team? Yes. So um, it is shared ownership, right? If, if, you, if you are in a ceremony and you see that things roll without you, you know, that, that when someone needs help, someone else offers help. And when uh, uh, people have ideas of what to do in a retrospective, and when, when you sit in the middle of the team, you see that the team is buzzing, right? That, that they cross-pollinate each other. And when they need help from someone else, they ask. And when the PO uh, asks them to do something which they don't understand the purpose of, they will tell him, no, first, uh, wh why would someone need something like that? And when, like, when they are grown enough to integrate in a healthy way in their environment and you just you just sit and enjoy you know like, like the the parent you know the jewish parents there is an expression called naches you know that you just sit and you're so delighted to see your kids so that i think that for us as scrum masters who are in that journey right we who are no longer at the start but uh, not there yet that you just uh, in that situation that you just described where we just sit back and enjoy watching the team perform uh we, we need to be looking at some things right what are those things that you look at that indicate to you that the team is or isn't moving in that direction so i'm 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 uh, i'm naive I, I guess that the team is always moving in that direction and perhaps some, sometimes i don't see it I, I assume the best. Sometimes what you can see is uh, that there is someone or, or like a subgroup of people that are not integrated, right? That um, there is often in a lot of teams, there's like classes. There is a, the, the, the QA and the developers. There are the people who do the back end and the front end, and they don't. It's it's like having a. I don't know if you know the stories of people with split brain. So people with split brain, one hand can open the shirt and the other closes the shirt. So when you have split brains in the team, to some extent, this is where you want to challenge and and like you have two teams that are work good together but they are in in, in fact one team be, be, between them and you want to make them work so like with that, each other. that would be for example the uh back end group versus the front end group yeah. that uh, nominally are in the same team but sometimes behave as if they were in different teams right that's what yeah. you mean yeah and what, one thing that also, uh, as you describe that uh, anti-pattern of the split brain team, uh, one thing that I see often is not really back and front end, but it's rather 
developers and then everybody else. It might be developers and then testers, developers and UX, developers and whatever that might be. Uh, and h- how do you then do that work? Like, what are some of the tips you can share to try to get that team to integrate, as you said? Yeah. So I can do nothing. I can I can nudge them into action, but it's it's their action, not mine. So one is to try and change the physical positions when when we were physical of the team, so that people work closely to people who are not in the team. Another one, which uh, currently is easier to do, is to uh, uh, pair programming, you know, to, to do pair work and to invite people who are not in your team to spend half a day with you. And another, another thing, of course, is uh, why is this an anti-pattern? This is an anti-pattern because sometimes, and I had a PO who really struggled with this, he had a, 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 a rich client team and a web team. And uh, every time he had to find specific story for each team, even if most of the work that really needed to be done was just on one side. So to challenge this, to to say, I'm not giving you stories as sub teams, I'm looking at you as one team. And it's up to you to uh, um, struggle with this backlog. And if you don't know how to do back and front end, it's your problem, but I'd rather leave you without work than to give you work just so you can work. And this is the, the, the you know, there's a push and a pull. So this is the push and the pull is to, to now nudge them into, so why don't you, if you have nothing to do, go and try and help him learn Java. Absolutely. And that's a, a great challenging uh, statement that may lead the team to integrate or, or, or not, but then we will see. Thank yeah, you for. By the way, just just about this, not all kids grow up to be perfect, right? All they have to be is perfect enough so that they can function in the world. Absolutely, and that's actually one of the things that we should uh, definitely include in our success definition: is that the team is functional enough to continue to help the the company and the customers. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that story, Dov. Ah, my pleasure, as always. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. 